Somehow this headline both shocked me and was also completely expected. And I don't know quite how to parse that in my brain, how I can both expect something and not expect something. But maybe you'll see what I mean when I actually show you the headline. Latest Piper Sandler survey shows almost 9 in 10 U.S. teens own an iPhone. That is an absolutely stunning statistic. 9 out of 10, 90% of teens own an iPhone. I'm assuming that they mean teens that like have a phone. It's an iPhone. I guess they don't mean just of all teens, they all have not an iPhone. Let's look here at kind of the data here in this survey. They surveyed 7,000 U.S. teens. Now, you know, look, this is like any survey, right? So, like, the methodology of who they're asking, where they are, et cetera, et cetera. So you can't just, you know, blankly say, in the U.S., 90% of teens with phones have an iPhone. Like, it's, you know, okay, 90% of the 7,000 teens polled have an iPhone. And specifically, it's 88% of teens own an iPhone and 90% expect an iPhone to be their next phone. And that is equally as important as, as, as impressive. Okay, so let's like take a brief moment. Let's pump the brakes and let's talk about this for a second. So maybe the reason why this was both surprising and unsurprising to me is that, you know, it sounds crazy, but then when I stop and I think about the people I know, the younger people in particular that I know, which isn't like a huge amount of people, but just the people I know in general, almost all of them use an iPhone, okay? Like my whole family besides me uses an iPhone, uses Apple devices, Apple watches, AirPods. And I guarantee that if I asked, you know, any of them, ask my nephew, hey, what phone do you think you're gonna have next? It's gonna be the next iPhone. Whatever, whatever hand-me-down iPhone they can get, is what they're gonna get. And I think that the biggest thing here that might be easy to miss here, because a lot of people might hear this and say, who cares about teenagers, right? Like they're not the big consumers, but you're wrong because this funny thing happens with young people, with teenagers. You see, uh, over time, they become adults, okay? And a teenager, once they become an adult, if the phone they had rated 83 on satisfaction, which is actually slightly better than Samsung, who's in the next spot, if they're really satisfied with their iPhone and now they're an adult, guess what they're gonna keep buying? They're gonna keep buying an iPhone. We talked about in a video just the other day about how iMessage is designed to keep you in the Apple ecosystem. And that's all part of this. It's not, you know, let's not paint this in, into saying that, you know, the Apple nefariously cages their customers so they can never leave. No, the reality is they're really happy with their iPhone, you know, and, and you can argue all day long. Are they happy with their iPhone because the iPhone is just the best? Are they happy with their iPhone because it's the only thing they've ever used? Are they happy with their iPhone because they've been told that the iPhone is the prestigious phone to own? It's the phone that the important people own and the popular cool kids, they all own the iPhone. I still see in comment sections sometimes stuff like, oh, I guess that Android user couldn't afford an iPhone. Motherfucker, this phone is $2,000. Like, there are expensive as shit Android phones. Android phones that do things Apple phones can only dream of doing. But we all have this thing in the back of our minds, like celebrities use the iPhone, right? Like, remember when uh, Gal Gadot or Gadot, whatever her name is, she had that Huawei sponsorship and she was tweeting about Huawei from her iPhone, like... Every celebrity uses an iPhone, and that is potent. That is such a potent thing that Android just doesn't have. They don't have that kind of thing at all. They don't have that sort of cachet with the general population. And even though Samsung rates an 81 on that, you know, customer satisfaction rating, Let's be honest, as good as Samsung phones can be, they're just not competing with Apple in that way. No one is going to dethrone the iPhone. And we all give Apple crap for, you know, doing things, you know, late, essentially. Just a few minutes ago, XDA iPhone 2023 to feature periscope telephoto lens. That's something we've had on Android for, you know, several years now. We always give Apple crap for being a day late and a dollar short when it comes to new features. But Apple buyers don't care. I consider and tell you until the proverbial cows come home about how the iPhone's notch is ugly. It's big. It's intrusive. I don't like it. 
Apple buyers don't care because at the end of the day, for the iPhone, it is not just about being a good phone. It's about being a status symbol in some way. And this goes back to the green dot, blue dot paradigm where people don't, I don't remember which is which. I think blue dot means you're on iMessage. They don't want to be a green dot because that's somehow seen as like, ooh, he's a green dot. He's poor or he's a loser or he's a nerd, which is not a bad thing. Apple has accomplished something almost unfathomable with their products and with the iPhone. They've become this lifestyle type product, right? Where like, you don't just buy an iPhone. You buy an iPhone, you buy an Apple Watch, you buy a MacBook, and, and you're you're an Apple person, right? Like Android people, you have an Android phone, you got a Windows computer, you've got a Windows laptop or a Chromebook or whatever. It's this, you know, kind of piecemealed thing. Whereas with Apple, it truly is like an identity for some people. And I'm not saying this to be disparaging at all, because if you're in that ecosystem, if you really do buy in there and you go all in on Apple, it's hard to compete with, with the synergy that they have going on there as well. So it's not just a superficial peer pressure-y kind of thing. It's deeper than just that. We cannot underestimate the impact of these numbers because what this says is not just that Apple you know, is, is dominant right now and is in a phenomenal position right now. They will stay there for years to come because as these teenagers grow up and 90% of them continue buying iPhones, you know, that's just going to keep things moving forward. And then as these teenagers grow up and then they have kids, guess what phones their kids are going to get? They're going to get their hand-me-down iPhones, just like my nieces and nephews. Then they're going to love their iPhone. Then they're going to repeat that cycle on and on. And the longevity of the iPhone is really important in that regard as well. You know, Android can get a bad rap sometimes because there's this perception that Android phones degrade really quickly. Now, I don't think that's really the case anymore. I think that's improved dramatically. But iPhones, you know, look, I, I know people that are still using iPhones that are five, six years old and they don't care. Do you know many people with Android phones that old? I don't. So there's a lot there, and I'd love to know what you guys kind of think about this down there in the comments. I think it's a really fascinating piece of data. And again, I have to stress here, this is a survey of 7,000 U.S. teens. You know, there's 350 million people in the country. How many of them are teenagers? I don't know, but I can tell you this. It's more than 7,000. Surveys, polls, things like this are never 100% accurate, but you can kind of, you know, plus or minus X percent, you can kind of get a little bit of a guess here about what's going on, and these numbers don't seem insane to me. Guys, like I said, let me know in the comments down below what you do think about this. Stay tuned for more content just like this, and until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.